Judging from the title of this video, you probably thought I had something against speedrunners or the speedrunning community in general. Like, like get into like a giant battle royale and kick the shit out of every single one of them. Nah. That's not what this video is about. And I'm sorry if that was what you were expecting. No, that's just the name of the next game I'm looking at for the indie showcase. At the end of the video, I'll have an update on that stroll pull that recently finished, so I hope you look forward to that. Our next entry is another PC title, and this one's a bit unique in terms of its current status. It's an early access game on Steam, meaning it's still in development. Now, how far it is in development, I'm not sure, but there's DLC for it already, though, so it can't be that unfinished. Oh, DLC purchases go towards cancer research. Well, don't I feel like an asshole now. For 10 bucks, you can play what they have now and offer feedback on what needs to be improved and what could be fixed. So it's almost like you're a beta tester from what it sounds. As this is not a completed product, I don't believe I can call this a review. I think that's something that could only apply to a game that's finished. This video is more on what I think of what's already there. If nothing else comes from this, then I guess it's a review in retrospect, but until then, this is Speedrunners as is. A joint effort between Double Dutch Games and Tiny Build Games where the player is required to prove just how well they can navigate through levels in a bid to beat the timer or the competition using a variety of colorful characters. A very simple concept, no matter if you're playing by yourself or with friends locally and or online. Right off the bat, I want to compliment the visuals for keeping it simple. It's important to remain focused on your well-animated character while blazing through terrain in a type of game like this. Picking someone like this cat makes things a bit easier for me. It makes me laugh seeing this dude in motion. It looks like a mascot lead for work. Now, I could imagine some would say the environments are a little on the bare side, and they're not wrong technically. I think they do the job just fine for what the game entails though, and it's not like it's entirely lacking in style. It can pop when it needs to, they probably just decided it wasn't super important, it was more about the game. Speedrunners reminded me heavily of Super Meat Boy. I know a lot of characters and platformers run and jump on floors and walls, it's just Meat Boy suddenly sprang to mind. It might be the controls and the type of obstacles you avoid, the homing missiles, the lasers, the occasional buzzsaw. It's nowhere near as hard though, I just want to stress that the most. Even though you die in one hit, levels are very short short, so it's a slap on the wrist most of the time. I have way too much fun with a grappling hook, a tool you can use whenever you want on white ceilings. It's very exhilarating to use correctly, you're like a super speedy Spider-Man. The single player stuff involves you racing to the finish in the allotted time as you prevent these bombs from going off placed by this Joseph Stalin lookalike. How fast you finish the stage will determine what kind of metal you'll receive, and getting to the end as fast as possible is really all you're doing here. There's no living and breathing enemies to avoid, it's mostly occupational hazards that'll give you the most crap. And sprinkled through most of these environments are these winged feet that unlock the final room in the virtual world. I don't think they do any Anything else and there's not even an achievement for getting them all. Those seem to be all centered on the multiplayer stuff. Really, single player kind of feels like an afterthought. It only took me about an hour and a half to collect all the winged feet, complete all the virtual rooms, and finish the story, if you can even call it that, considering how little of it there is. This mode is there for you to enjoy, and there is enjoyment to be had trying to reach the end as fast as you can, but you kind of get the idea that they want you to get your jollies with multiplayer, or maybe the workshop. You can make your own level layouts if you're of the super creative type. They give you a bunch of tools so you can get the precision you need, so that's always nice. I'm the kind of guy that loves to see what other people can make, because I'm sure as hell not a level designer. I'm also the kind of guy who enjoys a good multiplayer experience and thankfully speedrunners was there to provide. The goal in multiplayer is to simply outrace your opponent. If anyone should touch the edge of the camera or the borders, they're toast, and the level will continuously loop until only one player remains. It gets your blood running big time. You want to do what you can to stay ahead of the game, but if the other guys know what they're doing as well, you're in for the race of your life. Fret not, there are items to help even the odds should you pick them up. You can freeze things, toss a large boulder at them, maybe even fire a missile or emit a shockwave to knock them back. But the one I both love and hate is the claw. It just grabs the unfortunate player and pulls them back, that's it. But in a game like this, that practically means death. I swear to God, it's almost guaranteed most of the time. The only major issue I had with multiplayer is that the game crashed on me twice and it was always after picking a stage I noticed. I played about 20 matches total, it's rather alarming to think that my game has a 10% chance of crapping out on me if it is the game's fault and not my computer. Here's wishing that's looked at and fixed immediately if it's not just me. I guess the only other problem I have is that this game only has one song for stages. There's nothing wrong with the tune, I actually really like it, but some other choices would have been nice, and maybe that's what they're working on for the final release whenever that happens. When everything's placed on the table, I think Speedrunners is worth the $9.99 solely on the multiplayer. I'd love to see those issues I mentioned ironed out, but Speedrunners, at its current state, feels more complete than incomplete, thank goodness. Early access games are kind of hard to sell, really, just from the status alone. It gives you the vibe that you're about to indulge in a half-hearted meal, even when that's not entirely the case with this game. Again, I don't think single player is what you should be playing this game for. Early access Access can be a stigma, no doubt. You're always taking a chance by heading into something you're only familiar with because of how much you like the trailer. But on the other hand, people, including yours truly, are willing to shell out money for games that are not even out yet, like Kickstarter projects. Is it really any different in that case? Take it from me, Speedrunners is looking to score the gold medal. And if you're not entirely sold, try the demo out. That don't cost nothing. While you're thinking about that, let's take a look at that straw pull, and yep, that's what I thought. And now for a curveball. Shovel Knight and AVGN Adventures were games I was already going to look at for the showcase, so let's just remove those two there and look at that. The top three games are Skullgirls, Terraria, and Octodad. Okay then, we have our games, but 
why don't we make another straw poll and add another top three picks for the showcase? I'm obviously going to remove the already selected winner, so that leaves us with 15 other games to choose from. And because I got asked this a lot, Shantae's in the showcase too, guys. She was another one I was going to look at regardless of votes. And now let us begin with the viewers' choices. So next week, I shall see you all for Shovel Knight. Thank you for watching, have yourselves a great night, and take care.